your host this morning. We're very excited that you're here this morning to join us on this virtual open day. And if you can stay tuned for a moment, I'll share with you what the program is upcoming over the next almost 90 minutes. And um, so this morning, I'm really excited to share that we have some special guests with us on this virtual open day. Um, whether you have an admissions with us in process here at Greensville Valley, or if this is your first time engaging with us, the program today has lots of information and opportunities for you to learn more about us here at Green School Valley. Um, today on our virtual open day, we have a VIP guest, one of our students, a high school student who's been here at Green School since day one, since we were opened in 2008. So that's very exciting. But just as more people are joining the Zoom room right now, I'd like to give them some housekeeping and how you can get the most out of our virtual open day. So number one, we love it if you can put your camera on. I can see right now, on the screen right now, there's people with their cameras on and we've got students there too. That's wonderful. So we love to meet you in this session. Later on in the program, we will have some live chat with our leadership team. And it's really lovely for us to see you live on the camera for them to be able to talk to you. So number one, keep your cameras on if you, if you would like to do that. And we do encourage you to put your camera on mute, please. So your uh, speaker on mute. And we will be here. My team is in the background here to answer your questions. So any questions you've got, please put in the chat box here in the Zoom and we will be answering your questions later in the program. So let me share with you what you will be seeing and hearing today. First of all, you will be meeting our Head of Community and Environment, uh, Kate Duhan. And you will also have a special guest again today who is Sal Gordon, our principal, our Head of Teaching and Learning. He will be here to share more about the Green School experience and the Green School Way, our education program here at Green School Valley. Um, I'm also a parent here at Green School. This has been my eighth year and I'm very excited to welcome families from all around the world. Um, our mission statement is we're a community of learners making our world sustainable um, and heart, at the heart of that is community. So with that, I'm going to hand over to our host today, Sal and Kate, who will be sharing more about that. Um, Kate is the heart of our community here at Green School Valley and of course Sal is our principal. So without further ado, I will be handing over to you guys. Thank you. Thanks so much, Thanks, Leanne. Leanne. Always excited and uh, beautiful opening. Hi, everyone, wherever you are in the world. Good morning, good evening, good night. Oh, some people waving. Beautiful. And we see some children on the call, which is beautiful. We love, um, we love having a conversation with the children. Um, Sal, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Beautiful well, barley morning. Beautiful barley morning. <laughs> it's like um, this weather all the time, isn't it? It is. <laughs> Paradise. You know, um, eight and a half years here now for me, and the, mm -hmm. the, the memories that this place here, you might see we're in a quite an epic building here. The memories that this place here holds for me are pretty amazing from the learning experiences to the celebrations in the community, which is our heart of school, a beautiful place to be. You know, coming in this morning, um, it's Wednesday, right? You it's know, Wednesday. I, I, I have a hard day with, with times, even though I'm on my calendar half the day, but there's always a feeling about Wednesday here. Um, and we have uh, Jalan Jalan on a Wednesday for our middle school and high school students. What's and Jalan Jalan, a, yeah, Sal? So let's, Jalan Jalan let's explain that. A real cornerstone of our experiential learning program, experiential learning, learning by doing, project-based learning, community and service, etc. Now, Jalan Jalan means we get out of school and out of campus and into the island and into the community and do our learning there and have an impact with our learning there. So you come to school on a Wednesday and there's this buzz of excitement of students going off to projects. Right now, right now, um, they're probably not there yet. They're probably in our bio buses getting there. There's high school and middle school students um, surfing. They're uh, stand up paddle boarding as well. Mm -hmm. There's a diving club going that are doing coral restoration as well as part of that. I know there's a theatre group um, starting up a production. Um, Green Master Chef, I think that's in middle school. So there's some cooking seats to table happening right now. There's kids mountain biking, there's kids uh, grease policing with the biobus, Greenworks, so a sustainability project based unit. Um, oh, the fast fashion, mm -hmm. make and mend class, um, run through our, our high school arts teacher. Uh, there's also students doing internships. Right now you come to school on a Wednesday and you're like, wow, is this really a school? Because our middle school and high school students are out in the community activating their learning. And when that happens on a regular basis, Wednesday gets a feeling. 
Yeah. And there's a particular excitement at school every Wednesday. And that's probably the high I'm riding right now. Um, that's so. great, Sal. And actually, um, because it is Jalan Jalan Day out and about, yeah. and we love the idea that not only the campus is a classroom, but actually the island is a classroom, mm. um, we have uh, have been able to claim a space in our beautiful heart of school I don't building. Know if this is going to last because, because the students still are got out. Students, some students on campus learning. Some are here, here so. and actually, I can hear the primary school assembly firing oh, up yeah. uh, this morning too in the background. So you might hear a little bit of that. Yeah. Um, but just bringing us back to the program, we do particularly want to speak this morning about our mm. upper school program. Mm. So middle school and in particular high school too. And as Leanne mentioned earlier, we have Harper joining us on the bamboo mm. sofa, the bamboo chairs, uh, very soon to share with you a student perspective on what the green school learning experience really is. Mm. So we're looking forward to hearing from that and hearing more from you, Sal, on what the program itself looks like, how it's constructed and why why we teach and learn this way at Green School Bali in the world of today. So we're looking forward to sharing that with you and introducing Harper to you. But to really make the most out of this morning, we're really inviting you to share with us your questions or topics you would like us to cover because we are going to throw to a package for you that we have put together, as Leanne mentioned, that gives you insights into the campus, so a little virtual tour. Um, a conversation with a parent that has newly arrived in Bali. We have some information on visas and travel because that's a hot topic in the world today. Um, and also an introduction to our community centre team. So our admissions and onboarding and parent engagement group. So we have all of that coming up for you. And while that is playing, please do get those fingers working, open up the chat box. You all know how to use that by now and put your questions and topics in there because we are here for you and we want this session to be meaningful um, and useful for you. Students, children, also if you have questions for Harper or for Sal, myself, please do put those in the chat. So we're going to go to this package um, in just a moment but before we do that, Sal, maybe you want to share with our friends here how long you've been at mm -hmm. Green School and what your yep. background in Green School has been. Yeah, thanks. Um, eight and a half years at Green School Bali. Uh, remember the day that I walked in here with a really young family and my eyes wide open. I started at Green School in the middle school, uh, taught a lot of mathematics, thematics, science. Actually in the middle school I taught Bahasa Indonesian as well, uh, PE, arts, literacy. We trialled um, science-based literacy classes for a while. So I taught everything in middle school and taught a little bit of high school. Was head of middle school for two years and then two and a half years ago I moved into the principal's role about six months before COVID came and shook us about a little bit. So yeah, I'm a passionate educator, passionate about revolutionising the concept of education, not just inside the school, but how education is looked at in communities and how it is a basis for how we build cultures. Um, really keen about looking at uh, non-conventional ways of teaching and learning. Um, we, uh, I hope today, you know, always really exciting to talk about Green School, but looking at our upper school, our high school and middle school programs in particular, I hope today to shed some light on uh, the frameworks that we've, we've developed a, a new way of teaching and learning and a new model of school within there. Uh, there is a highly structured, well-documented curriculum that goes with this, lots of recess. We've had like 13 years of probably the most awesome educators on the planet come here um, to help design what we think is uh, not just a viable alternative to education, but something that uh, education should be moving towards in general across the world. You know, I'm always happy to talk about Green School. Um, check my stuff out on the blog because I've got some crazy mind wanderings there. Um, really excited to get Harper, a student here, because that's what it's all about, you know, the students. Really get to get Harper. I think what Harper will be the hot seat in the middle. Harper will be in the hot seat. Yeah. Can't wait. And, you know, I've known Harper since, since my middle school days um, and it's going to be really exciting to talk uh, to her about the student perspective. Yeah, that's brilliant. Thank you so much, yeah. Sal. And what we want to give you this morning is a real peek behind the curtain, a real insight into our high school program and to share with you the sort of students that really thrive in this kind of context and with this way of, of learning. And um, we want to be open with you and, of course, authentic with you and tell you about the, the strengths of the Green School program, but also talk to you about the sort of students that are a great fit for the Green School Bali High School program in particular. But um, we're not just here to talk about high school. We will be sharing general insights into the school. So if you have a child that is not high school or 
ready for high school just yet, this session is for you too. And feel free to ask questions about other parts of the school. So it sounded like it was a nice introduction yeah. from you and a little from me. So um, I am Head of Community and Environment at Green School. Among other things, I have the privilege of supporting the Admissions and Community Centre team, um, which supports incoming families all the way from application to onboarding to plugging into the community as a whole family. So as Leanne said, we're a community of learners and we offer programs and spaces, events and opportunities to network and connect for our parents as well. Um, so that is probably the piece of my job I love the most. I'm also a green school parent. I've had, I've been here for 10 years and my oldest two children have gone all the way through the high school and have graduated. And if you're interested to know what they're doing, just ask, I'm happy to share that. Um, and my youngest who started in kindy this big in mm -hmm. early years um, is now in grade 10, uh, the same grade level as Harper. So a lot to share with you this morning. Please don't hesitate, put those questions, comments in the chat. Leanne is on the turntables. She is monitoring, collecting all of those questions and we'll feed those to Sal Harper and myself so we can answer for you. So with that, awesome. we are staying right here to open up the live Q&A in just a little bit of time. And right now we will go to this package of videos that have been put together just for you and we will see you back very, very soon. Hi. I've made my way to the third floor of the heart of school. The heart of school is our middle school learning neighbourhood. I'm in a typical bamboo green school classroom because you can see there is no walls. All of our classrooms are surrounded by gardens which our students play and learn in. We also have an amazing beautiful river that's running really loud just down the hill. Uh, our solar farms, um, the iHub, the music centres, art centres, everything here is amazing and provides probably that structural, that physical campus that we know that at Green School Bali uh, helps us bring a learning program to life. Our students have provided the opportunities to not just learn about nature, but learn in nature. We have four learning neighbourhoods. Our youngest learners, the early years, up to kindergarten. Primary school, from grades one to five. Middle school, grades six, seven and eight. And high school, grades nine to 12. At Green School, our learning is for now, not for later. It needs to be fun, but it needs to be meaningful. And that looks different in each learning neighborhood. Our earliest program is nature and play-based. Yes, students start to develop literacy and numeracy skills, but it's more important for our youngest learners to develop a connection with nature and a connection with their peers and a connection with their learning. In primary school, our students begin to learn who they are. They discover themselves and our learning program allows that to happen. It makes that happen. And big projects, little projects, projects in the garden. Also strong thematics program connected to nature and sustainability. In middle school, middle school learning can become a little bit messy. Our middle school program is set up to allow students to elect certain parts of their learning program. So they have strong literacy and maths classes. They also have an amazing thematics program based on the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Our grade eight students at the end of middle school do a capstone project, which is based on their own sustainability passion project. In high school, our students are ready to make an impact in the world. Our program allows students to develop the life skills required and the mindsets needed to take action and to use their learning. High school students do a lot of project. Their culminating project, their Greenstone, is an amazing year-long learning journey where students choose a sustainability-based project and bring that project to life. We are a community of learners. It's not just a school community, it's about our local community too. We're not just an international school in an international bubble. We are deeply connected to our local community. I'm lucky to have with me today um, Hello, Ibu, how are you? I'm good, yeah. thank you, Pastor. Ibu Dawi. Selamat pagi. Ibu Dawi is a parent. Uh, Ibu Dawi has been on our board. And Ibu Dawi is an amazing, uh, important member of our school administration team. Are you good today, Ibu? Yeah, I'm feeling very good. Talk to us, let me know, talk to us about the types of connections that we have with the culture of Bali at Green School Bali. I feel so grateful becoming a part of this community because um, the local community here is really engaged and involved with the international community and uh, 
this is, I believe, that uh, would be very uh, important for our, our international community because uh, we can uh, bring everything together, like uh, we connect. Uh, if we have something in our local community, we always have a chance to bring that together within our community. And for example, if uh, we have like a every six month uh, celebration here for honoring a uh, goddess of knowledge, that's called Saraswati. So we're inviting all the community to come. We have dance, we have gamelan, that every parent and their family can have it here together. So yeah. it's amazing. So we learn and we share and we celebrate together. That's what yeah, we're doing here. As a global here. community. As a global community. Mm. And other thing is also really, really interesting for me, uh, so that uh, uh, this is uh, becoming like a, the biggest reason for me as a parent to send my kids here yeah, at green us. school yes tell us why. So, <laughs> what's what's yeah. about green school for a local student as a balinese uh, community we are like once again uh, saying like this is a great opportunity that we have a chance to learn international uh, 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 education uh, with that kind of standard uh, that they can uh, improve themselves i mean our local uh, children here but uh, at the same time, we, we have a chance to bring uh, our culture also with them. But we learn a lot also from our international community because this is like a making so a balance. The it's, learning it's is definitely two ways. Yes, yeah. And we have a program if there is no COVID. We have like an after school activities, we have a yeah. dance activities, we have a gamelan activities. So 37 local scholars at the school at the moment. Yes, at the moment. Yeah. And uh, but we also, like you said, we're, when we're allowed to fully open the campus, mm -hmm. we invite more than 300 other more local students that. to learn uh, liter uh, numeracy, literacy, yes. uh, English skills, but also sustainability education. Of course. Too. And other thing that is very interesting is also because uh, we also still learn class budaya. Yes, yes sure budaya really. class mm. and Bahasa Indonesia. Yeah. So we bring that together in thematic and then uh, even like uh, they put it in thematic and making like a such ogo ogo. Maybe mm. you know that kind of yeah. parade that's mm. very very famous yes, here I in love Bali. The ogo ogo. Yeah, before the big monsters. Yes, the big yeah. monster. Yeah. But a lot of thing is inside there. Like yeah. the wise uh, wise uh, local. I mean local wisdom is in there. Mm. Yes. It's beautiful. Thanks very yeah. much. This is one of my favorite places on the campus. We're right down here by the river. Behind me is the Ayung, the great Ayung River, and it powers right through our campus. It's a force of nature, it's also a source of energy. Right here, down at the river, we have our very own micro hydro system, the Green School Vortex. And this vortex provides a majority of the power that we use here on the campus, and it forms part of Operation Rain or Shine. So along with our other renewable energy systems, we try and offer a range of different learning opportunities for our children to see all the different ways Mother Nature can help power our campus, our community and the world. Clean, renewable and reliable energy. I'm here on the top floor of the heart of school and this is home base for our middle schoolers. And you can see behind me here some of our renewable energy technologies. We really love the idea at Green School that the whole campus is a classroom, the whole campus is a laboratory, and that we can innovate and we can find solutions to real problems right here on the campus. This solar system here is part of Operation Rain or Shine, which was a high school-led initiative that's ongoing, um, looking at understanding and implementing different types of clean, reliable, renewable energy right here on our campus. Everyone in our community has a part to play in making our world sustainable, starting right here on the campus. We have in our main car park our waste recycling centre, so all families can bring their recyclables there, sorted, to be responsibly moved on to recyclers on the island. But the very best of that trash we keep right here on the campus because this is a resource for learning. So in this area here in our community innovation hub is Kambali. 
and in Kambali we have resources here that can be used. So some of these products can be used raw for projects here on the campus that the students are involved in. But we also have some really cool equipment in here. So we can take certain types of plastics and they can be processed into filament like this that can be further processed into a form that we can put into molds. So you can literally bring in some plastic trash and leave with a plate or a fork or a bowl or something useful. We even had kids make um, recycled surfboard fins, which are really expensive here. So very cool product, limited only to the imagination. Here we are at the Human Resources Centre, otherwise known as the toilets. This is our one example of our composting toilet system that we have at Green School. Composting toilets don't need to be nasty. We have a fantastic odourless, waterless, chemical-free system that takes human waste and turns it into organic matter that can go back into the earth in a really safe way. These toilets are really beautiful. Our parents helped design these structures. So they're super friendly. They're actually a work of art and really inviting, even for the tiniest of people. That's our take on composting toilets at Green School. Just pulling up in the garage, friends, we ride in style and sustainably at Green School. Our Biobus transport service normally operates five days a week, taking our children to school and back home again in the afternoons. Our Biobuses run on used cooking oil, which the students are involved in collecting from hotels and restaurants around Bali. So it helps them dispose of used cooking oil in a responsible way and it powers our buses. I'm not actually allowed to drive the biobus, but I am allowed to use this. So for any families who don't ride the biobus and have a diesel vehicle, they can fill their car up right here on the campus at the biodiesel pump station. As well as the biodiesel bus service and the pump station in the car park to fill up your diesel vehicle, we also have electric charge stations here on the campus. So electric motorbikes are a growing option for transport around Bali and you can plug in right here. We're entering primary school and in primary school every class has their own set of gardens that they work with. In the upper school the students work with more cooperative gardens um, and working with permaculture principles to grow things that are beautiful but also that are edible and medicinal. And right here in primary at a grade one classroom we can see in the garden here we've got corn, we've got papaya, we've got bananas, we've got flowers bringing the bees and the butterflies and of course always so quintessentially Bali, the lemongrass. Our campus is wild. It's intentionally rugged. We design it this way. This is great for kids, gross motor skills but also their cognitive development. So everything is designed by intention, but we work with what is already here. On my left here, you can see these beautiful springs. This is where we hold special ceremonies during the year. It's quite a sacred place on the campus. It's really calm and very peaceful. On my right, in contrast, this pit of mud comes to life because this is the Green School mud pit. It's a really popular place on the campus. Um, so yes, our children get in here. It's like baby elephants on a hot day, cooling down in the mud and the water. Also, while I'm here, over there is Grasshopper Grove. This was named by our early years students because this is a great place to go if you want to find grasshoppers, um, dragonflies and butterflies. No two buildings on the Green School campus are the same. Every single one of them is unique every single one of them is also a work of art. We're here in the Green School Yoga Studio. This beautiful space comes to life when the children come in here for yoga sessions. Nothing is more beautiful than stopping in here and watching the three-year-olds take yoga. It is pure joy. It's a beautiful space. I can hear the river behind me here. There's a gentle breeze coming through here. It's a very, very serene and special place on our campus.
When we think about well-being at Green School, we think about the whole person, the social, the emotional, and of course the physical, and not just the individual child or the individual community member, but the whole community. This behind me is the ARC. This is our community centre and our sports centre. So what goes on in here? This is a place that we gather that holds us for recreation, for presentations, and for celebrations. This is the ARC. I'm here at the bridge and this is Green School for Grown Ups. Talks, courses, workshops, socialising, outings in Bali all come through the bridge. Right behind me here is our parent co-working space, but it's really much more than that. It's co-working, it's co-learning, it's co-creating, communicating, connecting and building friendships. We really love the idea that Green School is not just for the children, it is for the grown-ups too. So being a community is very much an important piece of the Green School experience, right from the very beginning of the school, right through to, day, to today, even in the current situation. And I'm really happy to be here this morning in the bridge, which is the Green School co-working space, with my friend Sanjana, who is a new parent to Green School. Um, just joined us this school year and super nice to have a little chat with you Sanjana. It's thrilled to be here. I'm so happy to finally be a part of the, the bridge and the, the Green School community. Great. So we have had to be really creative around how we build and maintain and nurture our sense of community during this time over the past 12 months in particular. Um, so a lot of the things we ordinarily do to help parents get involved with the school and feel connected, we've had to find creative ways around um, to still hold that space and hold that sense. It's really valuable to us. So in coming here as a new parent and connecting with the community, the parent community first and foremost, you know, that's something we always hope and wish our parents experience when they're new here. And what's your experience been of that? You know, um, before we actually moved to, to Green School, to Bali, uh, we came in f to spend a couple of days to see how the community works last year. And I have to say that for one year, we've been talking about not our son joining the school, but us as a family getting involved with, with Green School. Now that I'm finally here, everything that we talked about for the last year is actually coming true. In its own way, in its own different <laughs> way, but. I don't think it's less than anything else that, that uh, would have gone place. So, yeah. thrilled to be here and I can't imagine um, how much more active the community would be if we didn't have this pandemic situation to deal with. Yeah, well that's great and it's reassuring to hear that. Um, you know, that's what we hope for, for our families, that they do feel connected and do feel part of the community and a movement really. And we don't just hope for it, I guess, we try our best to sort of nurture that and nourish that in many different ways. Um, right here on the campus, we are opening up some parent programs, some outings for parents in Bali um, called Truly Bali to help our parents that have come from abroad to really connect more deeply with Bali and the experience there, as well as some events virtually and in person that we're running around really our parents sharing with other parents, right. their know-how, their story, their background, their skills and so on. And then taking that further to then connect our parents to our students. So one of the things we do is um, try and facilitate mentorships from our parent community to particularly our grade 12 students but also our grade 8 students on their capstone projects and right. that is just beautiful to watch that happen and I think it's all part of the the idea of wallessness, that wallessness is not just the physical way we, we um, arrange our campus and build our classrooms um, but also the way we think about ourselves as a community, that it's not teachers in one group and students and parents are over here and that there's some sort of separation, but how can we find ways that work for everyone to create those connections? You know, that circle of trust, essentially what you're describing, is very obvious. It's, it's there from the time I dropped my son off mm -hmm. to the time I'm dealing with mm -hmm. Bali and living in Bali because I am new here, you know, so I do have to deal with, I'm going to say this, bats and geckos and everything else, you know, it's part of the experience. But 
it's not difficult. It's not been difficult at all because of that circle of trust. You know, I can reach out to anybody and have a chat with them about what do I, what's the best way to do this. You know, how do I react to this, and what do I need to do to think about this particular thing. So that circle of trust, mm. it's very much alive, and it's one of the reasons why I'm so glad that we made this decision to come. No, Sanjana, we always encourage new parents to tap into the kind of um, the great font of wisdom that is our collective parent body, you know, in all things sort of living in Bali. You talked about the, the bats and the geckos and all of those things. And, um, you know, the, the biggest sort of community of parents are really a hive of information and knowledge. Is that something you've been tapping into? All the time. <laughs> you know, there, there's no question that's um, ridiculous to ask within that circle of trust. I can ask people where I can get the the best mozzarella to, what do I need to do with bats, you know, what do I need to do with with bug sprays and every every aspect of life that I can think about, whether it's medical to whether it's more superficial, I want my comfort food, what do I need to do to get that? Mm -hmm. It's all addressed, you know, and there are people there who have answers. Mm -hmm. Eleven in the night you ask a question, two minutes later you get an answer. <laughs> you know, it's phenomenal. I can't believe that uh, that there is this circle of trust and there's so much conversation that's happening. Um, I think for me, apart from that fount of wisdom that you talked about, is the openness. There is no question that's ridiculous to ask and I feel that. You know, I don't feel hesitant, I don't feel nervous about asking anything really to that, you know, within that circle. So that's amazing as well. You know, but I'm here every day and you sometimes forget how incredibly beautiful um, and original this campus is. And I'd love to ask you about your first impressions, the first time you physically set foot on the campus here. You know, it was, it was an incredible experience, but more than talking about my own experience and my husband's experience, because we had been exposed to the, to the videos on YouTube, you know, we'd seen the TED Talks, we'd seen the website. I'd love to talk about how my son reacted to it. I have a five-year-old mm -hmm. and we spent a day here at Green School and at some point, three hours into spending that day, he turned around and he said, okay, but where's school? <laughs> and I said, we are in school. He said, no, but where's school? You know, the place where I'm supposed to study. And, you know, it took us 10 minutes to explain to him that this was his school, that he was going to be studying with cows and chickens and, you know, the vortex and the river and the bridge. That was his school. You know, that, that idea for me to explain to him that school can be as beautiful, as different from his imagination. He's only five, you know? And yet that question was so strong and that impression that it made on him was so vivid. I um, love that. Out yeah. of the mouths of babes. Yeah. But where is school? He was looking for the, build, the, the box. He was looking for the classroom. Yes. He was looking for the box. Yes. He was looking for yes. the place where he could go in. Yeah. You know, the, the idea that, that there would be a teacher with a blackboard, mm -hmm. there would be little desks. Even, you know, little desks because he's tiny, yeah. but he was looking for that and he just couldn't find that. And so he thought we were tricking him into saying yes, because we wanted him to, to agree to the decision as well. So he kept saying, but where is school? You know, like you're bringing me here to go to school. Where is school? Mm -hmm. So that was that, that sort of, I think, clinched the decision for, for us as a family that we wanted him to to rethink what school could be. Mm. Um, it was so important for us. I love that. And how about settling into school? How, how's that process been for him? Day one, he didn't want to go in. Mm -hmm. Day two, he didn't want to go in. Day three, he complained because it was online school. He wanted to go back to campus. Mm -hmm. Day four onwards, I haven't heard you know, a single <laughs> complaint. He's up at 6 a.m., which is you know, phenomenal for me, um, getting ready to go to school and play with his, with his uh, friends. I think I have to say this, and I'm so grateful for all the teachers and you know, for this community for keeping the school open. We spent one year last year not having this kind of interaction for him. And I know how much goes into that. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Um, well, that's, that's what we're here for. That's, that's what we do. And the energy, the color, the movement, the sounds of having the children on site for learning is a beautiful thing. And we're, we feel incredibly privileged to have him here and incredibly grateful to all our families too particularly our new families that have moved across the planet um, to be part of it. So it's fantastic talking with you this morning, Sanjana. Thank you. It's anything I could do to talk about this. I'm thrilled to be here.
Should we go and have a cup of coffee? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> Hi, my name is Fabrice. Um, I'm a green school parent and uh, my wife and I have one daughter basically at uh, green school and she's attending uh, grade 11. Um, I've been here for 12 years, so I've known and I do know very well the ins and outs of uh, traveling to Bali, living in Bali, uh, and I'm happy to come here and, uh, and share some, some tips with you. And next to that, I do also have uh, a business, a travel business, that is basically helping and assisting people travel, especially through these uh, travel times. So to come to Indonesia, indeed, you do need a visa and uh, those, there's different types of visas. What is very important is that this is a very fluid situation and uh, that means that between now and when you plan to come in August or later in the year, many things might change, regulations might change. So it's very important that you stay in very close contact with school um, and uh, so that we can give you the most up-to-date information. Um, some families have a lot of experience already traveling around the world and sometimes resettling already, being expats, knowing the expat life. And, um, and others, it's your first time uh, packing up your stuff and relocating on the other side of the world. And it's a huge decision. Um, and, but always remember, especially with Green School, you're never alone. You never stand alone. You have a whole community around you. Um, and um, I personally, this is one of the reasons why I'm at Green School. It's this community life all around us, uh, being as one, um, and, uh, and that's just the beauty of the thing, especially, and I, I, we've experienced that even more through this COVID time. So what I would recommend is, if you are still where you are and you're making your plans and you're trying to figure out how and what, use, make use of that community. And that means um, make sure that if you're a Facebook user that you use uh, the Green School New Families page, um, that you join the Green School Generation New Generation page. Uh, there's a housing page, there's a travel page. Uh, we've got WhatsApp groups for communities and, and for the community living here. So there's so many resources and you'll see the moment you ask one question, you are gonna have a hundred answers to your question. So make use of it. We're here for you and we look forward to welcoming you. We are here for you. I'm Kate and community is at the heart and soul of what we do here at Green School. The community centre team and I are the friendly faces who will guide you throughout your journey, answering any and all your questions along the way. From the moment you connect with us to the time you're here with us in the jungle of Bali, you're part of the family. We understand that making the decision to come here is a major one, and it's our job to make it feel as seamless as possible we're so excited to know that you're considering Green School Bali for your family. Hi, I'm Leanne, Director of Communications here at Green School Bali and our admissions team. I've been at the school for the last eight years now and my daughter is in grade five. As a parent myself, I understand what it means to pack up your life and embark on this journey to Green School. My job is to connect with families like you, our applicant families, and provide resources and events for you to feel informed and engaged with our community here at Green School Bali throughout the application and onboarding process. Once families like you are here, we help everyone stay up to date with what's going on in our vibrant school and community so you can feel plugged in as soon as possible. I'm passionate about community and about engagement and I'm here for you. Now let's meet my colleague in communications and engagement, Tian. Hello, I'm Tian. I'm all about community and communication. I'm really looking forward to keep you up to date and informed until you get here and beyond. Hi, I'm Pancha. I'm admission manager at Green School Bali. From the moment you click send on the first email, I'm here to help guide you and your family through the step-by-step -step admission process. I have family with questions on the process, send friendly reminders and help our leadership team review application. The best part of my role is sending family good news when their application has been successful. That's my favorite thing. My other favorite thing is finally welcoming you all in our jungle school on the orientation and start your Bali life and green school life journey. We're the Green School Community Center and we are here for you. Back, everyone. Um, I hope that package was useful. We lovingly put it together for you to give you a few more insights um, into 
the parent experience, the campus and getting to Bali, um, as well as that little piece at the end to introduce our community centre team to you. So the people on the end of an application and to support families to get to Bali. So um, welcome back. We're here now. We have some questions. Thank you so much. Keep them coming. Um, this session is for you, this live Q&A part, the piece we love the most, actually about these virtual open days. I'm very excited to have joining us here on the Bamboo SETI, um, Harper, Harper Penrose, a high school student who has been at Green School since day one. Here she is, drum roll. Yeah. Drum Hi. Roll. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> so welcome Harper and um, Harper, thanks so much for giving uh, Sal, myself and all our friends out there some of your time this morning, which I know is precious as a high schooler. And uh, what are you missing out on this morning by joining us here? Um, so right now, since it's Wednesday, we have Jalan Jalan, which I think Pak Sal touched on. Um, it's like this four hour class every Wednesday where we usually go out of campus and yeah. Um, so for my Jalan Jalan that I've picked this block, um, is Greenworks and so we basically all have um, sustainable projects that we actually initiate and we're doing like active sustainable things like in the world in Bali going out and kind of independently working on that. Yeah so this uh, program is particularly really student-led right I mean it's yeah. about you stepping up and being supported to take action on real problems and finding real solutions. Yeah, we basically all find our focus within sustainability and find a project that we want to focus on for the rest of the block in the class. Oh, fantastic. Thanks so we much, We talk Harper. about blocks. Well, oh. let's just yeah. ask, Harper, mm. so uh, you've been at Green School since the beginning, so that means you started way back in early years. Yeah. Yeah? So for all of you out there, particularly the children, if you have questions, Harper is your friend, so please keep those coming. I can see we have a couple of questions from the children, which we're looking forward to answering. But also, if um, you have children that aren't high school level, even though that's particularly our focus today, um, Harper can help add some colour to questions on that as well. So thanks so much, Harper. And Sal, before we kick off with the mm -hmm. questions, maybe you can add a little bit more colour to what the high school program is really all about and the type of students that we love to have in our high school program. Yeah, yeah. Can, I'll get to that bit. I think there's a time here that I also need to sort of provide a little bit of an overview around the learning program at Green School because we do um, say it, it is a different type of learning program. There's enough information on the website that I hope people are looking at. But it's important for people to know when we have been given an opportunity to design a new model of school, a new model of school about what it looks like, what it does, what the learning involved. Um, we've taken that very seriously, but it's taken 13 years to get to a place now we're in uh, a really strong position in terms of the learning program. Now that has come about because of um, particular strength in the, what we call the frameworks of learning at Green School Bali. So a framework actually gives us strength and structure, but allows us to bend and evolve um, with, the, with the world and, and with the, the needs of um, students around the world. So when we have some of our frameworks, we go, okay, so we've got three frames of learning at Green School Bali. One is a proficiency frame, a thematic frame, and an experiential frame. Now that proficiency frame is academic learning. We haven't thrown away strong academic subjects. You know, um, kids, uh, students in high school, middle school, etc. They're doing algebra, they're doing pre-calculus, they're doing chemistry units, biology units, they're advanced literacy classes. The thing that makes our proficiency program in high school particularly different is that students can choose different threads, uh, choose different levels, um, and activate their learning in terms of academic learning and science, literacy, maths, just like at any other school, but probably sometimes with some more funky, like <laughs> boomerang maths, um, funky classes. So there's a proficiency frame and that's strong across the whole school, but it's important to know that the high school program has a highly documented, well best practice proficiency academic program. And then there's thematic learning. Now we believe that learning inside a school should uh, replicate what's happening in the real world. And what's happening in the real world is a whole heap of interconnected different systems all playing in a role with each other. And so we design learning experiences like that. We blur the subject lines. You can do a thematic on oceans, on uh, social justice, uh, any, any sort of sustainability based issue and bring in art, music, maths, literacy, history, geography, science 
and make an amazing learning experience based on a theme rather than a subject. And somatic learning across the school and in the high school is very powerful and very real. The other framework, experiential learning, which we've talked about a fair bit in terms of Jalan Jalan, but there is a lot of experiential learning. We, it is one of our big um, highlighted areas in our pedagogical statement that we learn by doing. Now, Harper's already talked about students activating their learning and doing something with their learning. When I went to school, I didn't do anything with my learning except for pass exams. That's the only thing, I'll be honest with you, that's the only thing I did with my learning at that time and I got a number at the end of it. Our students at Green School Bali activate their learning, they're supported and guided in that way. They activate their learning and they do something with their learning now, which is what the world needs and that's what a school should be. So proficiency, thematic, experiential, giving us frameworks of learning that we've been able to evolve different amazing learning programs, but with structure, with world best practice around learning outcomes, scope and sequence, et cetera, et cetera. There are other frameworks and I could talk all day about it, but I think before I go into, what was the question you asked me to talk about? Anyway? Well, yeah, well, we can't come back to the question, but you know, that's fantastic, Sal, and thank you for sharing that particularly in a way for us non-educators mm. to, to I hope understand it's clear. There's a, there's a highly documented see. curriculum, well, best practice, um, developed by awesome educators and has strong academics, but also so many opportunities to do real projects and activate their learning right now. Mm. Fantastic. And led by a very passionate educator who's uh, quite a bit of a revolution. Do, do a little bit of love for teaching and learning. Yeah. Non-stop. Um, but this, uh, Sal, just spinning off what you mm. just said there, um, Harper, um, interested to know with the high school program, how many choices you have in terms of, as Sal mentioned, you know, building your own kind of learning pathway, your own voyage through high school, some things you have to do, right? You need certain credits to be able right. to graduate with the Green School Diploma, but how many sort of choices do you have just to give our friends a sense of that? Well, it's not always exactly the same, but um, this last block, I think we had like a lot of choices for each class. We have around like five to seven classes a, in our schedule mm -hmm. and then so you need to choose five to seven yes. courses basically. and then there's yeah. options within we just have colors for each like mm -hmm. time period of a class like there's your purple class and there's your yellow class mm -hmm. and people have different classes within that and so I don't know I think there's like 10 15 choices for each of those there's a lot of wow. choices there's a lot, that's of, a choice. lot of choice yeah, yeah. it's a lot of choice Okay, that's great. Well, let's jump to the, the questions. Oh, you wanna, well, oh, well, you're, I didn't even finish the up. question. Okay. I didn't even, yes, and I've forgotten right. the question though. This well, is, was, this is a conversation um, live, non-scripted <laughs> conversation, everyone. The question was really about like giving an overview of the high school program. So the okay. intention, but also I think it is interesting to share, you know, what we're looking for in applicants to our green school program. The, the children that do the best in mm. our green school environment and- I'm program. sure I was actually getting to that. You were getting to that. Because it's definitely linked to, um, one of the and another framework and it's a pedagogical framework pedagogy is the how of teaching and learning uh, which is real uh, we want to provide real learning opportunities that are relationship based experiential authentic so connected to the real world and starting local but moving global so real r e a l keeping it real and our learning program is, are all based on that in particular in high school and i suppose it speaks i suppose it speaks to the type of students and families that we're looking for as well we want those real families that um, see a need for change in education. We want real students who are able to activate their learning and take the opportunities that are available to them. You know, we're not a, we can't be everything here as well. So we want people that are realistic about the opportunities at Green School, but know that you're probably not gonna play in a string quartet here. You could, I'm not saying it's not gonna happen, but you probably wouldn't move to Bali to, um, to join the, the, ensemble, the string ensemble. ensemble. How's mm -hmm. the word go? Ensemble. Ensemble. Yeah. <laughs> so activated learners, forward thinkers, learners, um, learners that are part of our community, a big part of that is this community of learners making our world sustainable. You know, making our world sustainable is a pretty big task that we're putting on, our, on ourselves as a community and we don't force it onto students, but we provide the opportunities where, wherever that fits in their life, whether it is fast fashion or it's water or it's just personal sustainability, um, community things. Uh, we do sustainability is something that we like to see in our families and our students to have a sustainability mindset. Mm. You know, the program's intentionally designed to provide student choice, but there's also an intention in there that um, where students need to activate their learning and, and be a part of that process. And families and parents are a part of that process as well. Yeah, thanks, Sal. And I think that's that's the flip side of 
providing that choice um, for students to yeah. build their own kind of voyage through high school right through to graduation. And with that comes a sense of responsibility with mm -hmm. that autonomy that, yeah. the, that the students get. And they are the sort of students we're looking for. And it works. Okay, yeah. and this works. We've got students <laughs> graduating every year, grade 12 students. I know with, is there's a question in here, where do our students go to university? Wherever they want. Um, and we're changing the conversation about university placements and pathways after secondary school where we see Green School Bali as a place where universities will start coming to shop for our students rather than our students having to go to universities. Well, let's jump into the questions. And um, I do want to start with the question from Lewis because this is from a child, from a student. And maybe Harper, you can answer Hi, this Lewis, one. Hi, Lewis, give us a wave. Where's Lewis? There he is. Right. <laughs> hey, mate. Uh, so Lewis has asked a question, um, if we have a, a lab, a laboratory at Green School, and Lewis is particularly interested in chemistry. So what have we got in the way of, of laboratories? Because we've got the traditional, but we've got the quite innovative as well. Yeah, so actually behind us, in the building behind us, we have um, a science lab, particularly for high school. Um, and we have multiple science teachers. We definitely have chemistry class. Um, I mean, for me, I don't take that much science. Um, I haven't had chemistry yet. I probably will. But I'm not sure. I think that's the only science lab. Yeah, we do have what science. What other lab are you talking we, we about? Do, we have the bio lab as well, which oh, is in yeah. the iHub, which we do a lot of sort of top the level IHub chemistry. Being there. The, I'm here to translate for you. Yeah. So the iHub is our community yeah. innovation hub, which is a, a zero waste maker space, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's also a yeah. laboratory. Yeah, there's different uh, opportunities for advanced, intermediate, even sort of entry level uh, biology, chemistry, physics across the high school. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, Harper's probably more interested in some other things. So she's been able to design a pathway around science a little bit, even though science is her world. I like science. Yeah. I just we're also <laughs> really excited. You know, we're recently uh, brought into the Education in Motion uh, network, and I'm, Kate might have to translate as that as well. But, you know, being part of a global a network of international schools, which includes Dalich Colleges and the Dehong Network in China. Green School Bali is, is a, um, a very happy and proud and strong member of that, that group now, Green School International, I should say, because we've got some amazing, uh, amazing things happening in New Zealand and South Africa right now with Green Schools as well. But with that become, uh, comes strength, we hope to build an environmental science centre that will really focus on the environmental sciences. That's what we're going to call it, an environmental science centre. Um, Science is really important. It's important to me personally and individually as an educator that you know science provides solutions and there's you know, something that's happening this week in the high school which we haven't said at all. You know, uh, the high school students have created the Sustainable Solutions event, which is connected to you know COP um, and students across the whole school are, are running a full day of sustainable solutions of uh, speakers, uh, workshops. Uh, other activities, there's a community event at the end, there's a bit of a, a Fridays for Future March, all student-led, student design, all around sustainability. So if it's sustainability, I, need, I know there'll be a lot of science in that day as well. That's great. Well, Lewis, to wrap that up for you and answer your question, um, we have more traditional science lab, although of course in a bamboo building, like everything at Green School, we have two labs right behind us here that Harper mentioned. And actually, I don't know if we have our friends from New Zealand, the Parrots who founded Green School New Zealand, if they're out there, oh. they actually donated that laboratory to Green School Bali right, as, a, as a gift, which was just absolutely brilliant. We have our Community Little Innovation way. Hub, which has lab space in there as well. And we have awesome. an Environmental Science Centre that is right. coming and will be here for 2022-23. Okay, so next question. Um, does the school make arrangements for students to engage with and learn from Balinese art and cultural communities? Maybe, Sal, you can Huge. have a go at this and then, Harper, yeah. if you can give us a practical example of what that might look like for okay. a student. Yes, definitely across the school, Bali, not just the art, but the culture and the language, celebrations, uh, are a real integral part of our community. Um, you know, we're definitely not a bamboo bubble in the jungle, uh, an international school that's disconnected. Um, one of the most amazing things about Green School Bali is our connection to, the, to our local community. Those connections are strong, um, they're reciprocal, um, we learn from them and they are learning from us as well. Um, we're definitely um, a Balinese global community in the jungle, making our world sustainable. Mm -hmm. We've got some really strong connections um, to our Balinese community through our local scholars program. Uh, there's about 36, 37 Balinese students, I think, at the school, which is such an amazing thing to have. 
Uh, we've got a, a, a cool, cool connection program. So that's a, a local students that aren't uh, Green School Bali students. They come into Green School after school. That's restarting now after COVID. Um, but also, you know, the opportunities to learn and the concept of um, your community and your campus being part of your um, the, the classroom, you know, Bali Arts comes in there really strongly. Uh, we've got an amazing Balinese Indonesian teaching team as well here. Uh, they're able to bring that to life. Um, but I don't see a day go by, and I could look around here. I'm looking at a Bahasa community uh, display with Bali arts, um, with weaving and things just, just over there. I don't see a day go by where Balinese, either arts, culture, community, music isn't a real part of the community and the learning for everyone. So, you know, yesterday, Salon Harper, mm. you know, we had a lot of rain and um, I saw some students from primary school leaving the campus with umbrellas, the, basically, that they... Uh, they had the woven weaving. together mm. with the palm fronds they had learnt from one of our Balinese art teachers down yep. in the primary school um, and they had made their own umbrellas, an organic, completely compostable um, mm. umbrella. So it's kind of everywhere intentionally and also just organically yeah. through our community. Yeah. And Max has actually asked a question about whether primary students um, learn languages and Max is a child, a student. So hi, hi Max, Max, shout out to you. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, we do, and that's a big part of it. But um, in the in the primary school, but right through the school, mm. learning Bahasa, Bahasa Indonesia. Bahasa Indonesian is a requirement here for us. In a formal way. In a, in but also, formal of course, way. informally, so yeah. because we're here in yeah. Indonesia, in Bali. So we can use it throughout the day here to show respect mm -hmm. and gratitude and make friends. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't, know, yeah. I don't know if Max is... Max is a question. I don't know if you know if it's another language. You know, we're an English language school. Part of today's session is clarity as well. English language school um, through the lower school, uh, early years in primary, there is a real focus on Indonesian language and culture. Uh, in the middle school and high school, you do have the opportunities later on to do some language lab and learning of other languages. But we don't, and it's clarity again. We don't offer. Uh, a, a thread of French or Spanish mm -hmm. or German or any other language. You know, we've got a, a pretty global community here of about 50 different nationalities. So it, it is very, well, it's impossible to provide uh, a language learning uh, program for all of those um, people. So we've got mm -hmm. strength in our Indonesian language program and we provide opportunities for students, probably more independently, to learn different languages. Mm -hmm. Done in primary, certainly more, a more structured mm. program, yeah. but um, also woven in throughout the day um, just within our community here. But um, Harper, just in terms of engaging with Balinese art, with Balinese craft, music, dance, and just the culture generally, I don't know if you want to give some perhaps some examples I've uh, had, to our friends. Yeah, I've had multiple classes about different kinds of Balinese arts, like um, Balinese puppetry, um, offerings, like, yeah, there's multiple classes I've had in the past um, about Balinese culture because it's an important part of our lives. Mm -hmm. So not only language, but also just, yeah, cultural things. Um, I remember at the beginning of Corona, we had, um, we were reading this book that was written by a Balinese author, and it was, like, about Balinese life during the colonization with the Dutch mm -hmm. and then like as well as reading that book we also every class time would learn to make a new like Balinese craft so that was cool. yeah beautiful <laughs> so getting the hands-on piece in there so I think that's right and it's also a bit about our values as a school too for most of us here we are we are the guests so in terms of our values we want to show respect and gratitude and tolerance and equity and so learning some of the language and understanding the culture at least a little bit um, is something we feel is actually a shared responsibility for us. Yeah. And in my grade in particular, we have a lot of um, local scholarship students. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like equal um, mm. and like, you know, sometimes they'll just be speaking Indonesian throughout the day. So you sort of are forced to learn Indonesian outside of class as well because mm. to talk to them, that's what they like to talk in yeah. the language they want. Thank you, know? you Harper. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so a question about technology in the day-to-day -day curriculum. Um, right across the school, I guess, mm -hmm. it would be good to give a perspective. I know this parent, Ginger, hi, Ginger, um, has uh, children that are primary and middle school age, but we can touch on high school too. So maybe, Sal, you want to start with that? Yeah, um, well, we do have access to uh, IT-based learning opportunities through 
uh, through summer primary school. It really picks up, I suppose, in terms of access and utilising tech for learning uh, in middle school and high school. All our middle school, high school students bring their own uh, laptop device. Um, you know, we, we like to think that we can provide an opportunity to learn some of those really important future skills that are most of them tech-based, um, whether that's coding or robotics, there's different uh, elective op options for those. Um, we run most of our classes in middle school and high school through the Google Suite, so there's a real IT connection there of sharing and learning together uh, in, a, in, a, in a virtual way. Um, there's different options, but you know, part of it also is to be mindful that we don't want to go too far into that, and I know from personal experience, uh, when we did jump on Google Classrooms, for example, in middle school, we all went too far into access and use of IT. Uh, and we had to, to pull it back and get the old pens and pencils out again. Um, so we want to keep uh, forward thinking, but we also want to keep our, what we could say, our feet planted firmly in the mud and connected to uh, traditional local wisdom solutions as well. So there needs to be a mix of that sort of high tech new, but also uh, reconnecting with our local uh, roots and, and more sort of soft human skill things as well. Bit of a mix, but yeah. there's a fair bit of I, there's a fair bit of tech and IT learning, uh, particularly in middle school and high school, but we don't overdo it. We don't overdo it. And no. just to answer the the additional question about who provides what, so in the primary school, um, the school provides equipment, iPads, and and Chromebooks for when students are learning that way. And then from middle school up, every student provides their own yeah. laptop. Yes. Yes, as part of the learning. I think that probably covers that one. Let's let's jump along to different topic completely. Sport. sport. Let's talk about sport. Um, Harper, maybe you can start. What's your take on the sport programs here? And um, there's another question about pe whether parents can help participate in our sport program. But but maybe you can just share some of your or your take on sport, the Green School way. I think we've gotten a lot better <laughs> in general at sport. I remember, so there's something in Bali called BSSA yeah. where it's like um, all the international schools kind of compete together in sports. Um, and I remember we weren't so good at that before. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the way you think we're better. No, we're highly competitive now. <laughs> Harper's talking about like us playing sports, structured team sports, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, basketball, soccer, volleyball, athletics, swimming and cross country across the whole calendar of a year with the other schools. So we do training and things like that, yeah. like other schools. And then we go off on Wednesdays mm -hmm. normally and play other schools around the island. And then there's normally a final series as well. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. sport like that. Mm -hmm. But there's also like options to choose different physical well-being mm -hmm programs through middle school and high school the choices become quite yeah there's a lot of different choices but you know Harper's it's okay like Harper you're probably I'd say that you've done I've seen you in lots of theater performances mm -hmm. I see you in lots of project-based learning classes lots of sustainability classes and again like Harper's just one example of a student that's motivated and has found a, a passion and, and a sort of a pathway and has activated that and I don't think correct me if I'm wrong but sport probably isn't a a big part of that. My know. sport right now is hip hop. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, so we do provide opportunities. So if you don't want to do, you know, a structured um, basketball unit, then you're doing hip hop dancing in your yeah, sport. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Also, do you want to show us a few moves? Harper? No. No. And the okay, class no. is actually right next to my office, so I do get to, to you know, do a bit of this in my office when when that high school hip hop. It's dance really fun. Also, could be building, you know, building a new garden bed. I know we mm -hmm. have some um, physical well-being classes come up that are helping to build a water harvesting system so we have students digging digging a um, hole for that digging a <laughs> hole um, but also moving rocks in and so on so it has a purpose um, and so the competitive sport program forms part of it but mm -hmm. it's not our biggest thing at green school and i'm really glad these questions are getting asked because it is our opportunity to share really openly um, what we do at green mm -hmm. school and where we put um, our energy and our focus yeah i mean we're, we all want to provide, well, we all individually, I want to develop physically. I don't want to get old and fragile. Yeah. But that means something different to me than it does to you probably. And we provide those options for our kids yeah. as well. The sense of team and all mm. those sorts of things. Mm. I know we always do very, very well in the cross country because our campus it's, just keeps us country. very, very <laughs> agile. It's cross country all the time. <laughs> yeah, a lot of steps. But we also have um, something that's become really big in high school is house sports. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we have yeah. like, if you know Harry Potter, kind of like houses, um, but it's 
uh, the elements. So it's earth, air, fire, and water. And you're just randomly put in one. And then you get to like mix grades and stuff for that and work together and do some games that are like it's funny, more Harper holistic. Hasn't been, uh, Harper hasn't been to any other school. A um, holistic approach to it though too. Other because... schools all have houses. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. It's oh. not just green school. <laughs> <laughs> People That's are probably awesome. familiar with that idea of, um, of sport houses, <laughs> Great, but Papa. actually it's a bit more of a holistic approach because there are other things that mm. students can do to support um, their house and uh, sending their house up the leaderboard from how they're demonstrating that, their values within the community to um, more intellectual kind of pursuits and games and challenges as well as the physical pieces. So. Thanks so much. But while we're on the topic of sport, um, we have a question here about our gymnasium, which um, if you haven't seen Leanne, uh, we'll probably put a link in, in the chat there to some pictures. So we have the most incredible gymnasium in the world. I think I can say that. <laughs> it's a bold it's statement, but I think it's true. It's definitely the most beautiful. Amazing. Stunning building, uh, bamboo, the biggest bamboo arch building in the world with a floor that is made primarily from recycled uh, airline tyres and a water harvesting system that the high school students are implementing. So it's very, very special. Check out some pictures of that. Okay, um, so we have some questions here from Janie. Thank you so much. And we might take these because there's a whole a whole swath of them as kind of rapid fire. How are we okay. feeling about that? All right. Okay. All right. I uh, don't know if I can do Yeah, I'll do rapid fire. Here we rapid go. fire. I'm going to send the first one your way, Harper. You All ready? Right. Yeah. Okay. What is a typical day at Green School? <laughs> I can't do rapid. <laughs> that is so... <laughs> okay. Everyone has a different schedule in high school because we all have different classes that we've picked. But um, basically, you usually on Mondays have sort of a thematic. Um, mine is I'm doing like a mental health class. Mm -hmm. And then you have snack like for like 10 minutes, I think. And then you have a proficiency, either literacy or math. So there's different levels of math that you choose to be in and then also same with literacy different levels um some examples for literacy um i'm reading king lear right now in mine um another literacy class is um doing like writing a children's book mm -hmm. i've only said two classes but that's not very rapid <laughs> lots of things happen yeah. what are you doing in maths so I think math i'm doing math two math the two. boomerang one. Oh, the boomerang maths looking at quadratics and that. polynomials yeah, yeah. Looking it's at mostly what, functions <laughs> functions yeah yeah like really cool ones polynomials yeah okay sounds great sounds great <laughs> i think the point is it is always a combination of you know we we want intellectual challenge we want mm -hmm. academic you know robustness to the program we want the kids to get hands-on we want their well-being to be taken care of the programs are sort of put together that way with that theme of environmental sustainability sort of mm -hmm. weaving throughout. And that's everything from classes and courses to what you eat for lunch, the food we provide on campus, how we deal with our waste. So it and, and that sense of community. So mm. there's there's so much in there um, that could be shared. But I hope that gives you a little taster, <laughs> that, that tiny little fire. taster. The rapid fire. Well, don't help. There's no way you can answer that rapid fire. OK, oh, next no. one. <laughs> Maybe I'll answer. take the next one. What oh. are the demographics of the student enrollment? So we take students from all corners of the globe. Um, this year we have welcomed around 50 new families. Even in these COVID times, we can support families with visas and with travel advice, actually getting to Bali and settling into our community here. Um, super excited about looking at the year ahead um, and welcoming new families. We have around 40 to 50 different nationalities in the school. So people come from all corners of the globe. Mostly they're moving to Bali to come to the Green School. It's very exciting for us um, and for those families, except for our Balinese families who are here long-term, those children that are on scholarship that um, Sal mentioned earlier. What we're looking for in our students, particularly in the upper parts of the school, are children who want to be at Green School. Um, children who will do well with the sort of structure and the autonomy that we give students and are ready to step up to that with a sense of responsibility and enthusiasm for what we offer. So I hope that answers that question. Um, that wasn't so, very rapid either. Here we go. I'm going to really do this rapid. All right, see if you can do this one quickly. Okay. How do green school grades perform on college entrance exams? Yeah, all our students, once they either transition out of um, any grade back into a home school or conventional school, 
Um, we collect information, none of our students struggle academically. Um, we do, our high school program provides a high school diploma, uh, which is equivalent to a US high school diploma. It's our high school program, our whole school's got WASC accreditation and Indonesian mm -hmm. International School accreditation. Uh, being in the EIM network is also going to help us. Our students, you know, choose to go to university often. Um, students have gone to, I think there's, I think it's about 70% of our students from um, from high school, grade 12, actually choose and go to university straight out of school, um, which is pretty good. Uh, the other 30 are probably going off to run businesses and, and do different things. Uh, the grades transfer fine. Uh, it's often a challenge, uh, to be honest, it's often a challenge, you know, with 40 or 50 different countries, our grade 12s at the moment, 20 of them, they could all be going to 20 different countries and 20 different university things. So matching them up um, for the next step, whether that's university or, or not, um, is, is a focus for us. But, you know, our, our program here compares to anywhere in the world and our students go anywhere they like afterwards and, and thrive. Yeah, and I think it's it's right to share. You know, we don't fire, focus though. a lot on standardised testing no. um, with our students. And sometimes we do need to, to sort of not kick the door open at universities, but nudge it open a little mm -hmm. um, for our students. And it is often the case that universities want green school graduates because they do stand out from the pack. So students like Harper that are diving in um, and kickstarting projects, running things independently, I'm really getting the most out of the program that graduate with a portfolio and e portfolio. Have you got an e portfolio, Dylan? I have what like half it? of one. You're building, half a portfolio, so that's all right, an you're in grade 10. You know, when I went to school, I got a number um, at the end of it on a certificate and our high school students here get a number. Well, they don't, mm -hmm. they get a diploma. Um, they also leave with an e-portfolio, they leave with a Greenstone TED Talk style mm. um, mm -hmm. description from themselves about their learning and the impact that their learnings had on the planet. You know, our, our high school students, you know, they're pretty awesome and they do, they leave this place and go out and shake the world. Yep. But I think it also it's, you know, if, you, if your child really wants, has their eye on a particular university that has a particular entrance requirement and it is more traditional in that sense, there are lots of schools out there that can support children on that path very explicitly. Mm. What we're offering here is something a little more holistic while maintaining that pathway option for the students who want that as well. And that's our commitment to our, yeah. our kids here. Yeah. Okay, next question Still under the heading rapid of rapid fire. And fire. Uh, what types of extracurricular activities are there? All sorts from sports to arts to theatre. Um, you know, we've had to slow down uh, with COVID and doing sort of uh, after school extracurricular things, but we're amping that sort of up right now. Even what we're doing now for middle school and high school, most schools would be, it would be extracurricular sort of outside the classroom learning. Um, strong uh, sports program after school, strong music and arts if you want, um, a lot of options. Mm. Um, but to tell you the truth, um, you start a day of school here at 8, 8.15 <laughs> and by 3, um, going through the jungle, uh, out into the community, uh, it is kind of nice and warm here. Let's say warm is a nice way of saying it. Uh, you, <laughs> most people are pretty exhausted by about three or four o'clock. And it's a big day. It's a big day. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I have an extra curricular, mm -hmm. which is GSSA. Okay. Yeah. And um, that stands for Green School Student Association. Um, basically, it's like the school council. And yeah, I mean, that's like a strong that? one that's yeah. been What's happening for a while. What does the GSSA do? What's the student association do, Harper? We do a lot. We um, do a lot. I think we plan a lot of events. We um, get like forums from school that we organize, like to see what the students are thinking, what the students mm -hmm. are lacking, wanting, mm -hmm. what is going well, mm -hmm. um, and just basically hearing anyone's problems and solutions um, and getting student voice to yeah. be heard so yeah. it's really our student council um led by high school and the council the student council has two seats on our school board so student voice is very important to us and very important to the students as well mm. all right let's keep uh, cracking on here um are there volunteer what type of volunteer opportunities are there at green school well there are plenty um, it's always a happy matchup of what parents are passionate about interested in and what the school wants needs and can accommodate can be anything from a parent coming in, being a guest storyteller in primary school, right up to right now we have some parents that are helping us build a climbing wall on the campus and everything in between. 
So yes, plenty of opportunities for parents to get involved. Most parent, most parents come here and they first one of the first things they go is, oh, I wish I could time travel and come back and be a student and be at school. But then they realise that there's so many opportunities through the bridge, um, and other sort of community events for them to actually reignite that love of learning as well. Um, not just learning, but activate and being part totally. of a community. Yeah. It's so not, true, This Sal. isn't the school that you just drop your. Well, you can, I suppose. You can just drop your kids off and then pick them up in the afternoon. Um, you can do it like that, but there are so many opportunities to, like I said before, you know, to, when you create a new model of learning, you you want the community to be a part of it. You want your school to be a part of the community, but to, the community to be a part of your school and parent learning, parent involvement, parent volunteering, whatever it is. Um, you know, last week, um, Valent uh, no, 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 Halloween. Halloween. Halloween, we had the early years parents come in and design the, the mm -hmm. trick-or-treat um, journey for our early years students. Um, just an example of parents wanting to be involved. And I spoke yeah. to some parents that day and, and I, I said to them, like, oh, I can't, my parents didn't get involved in school at all. And it wasn't even really an option. But all of the parents here feel, feel like they're coming back to school themselves and are able to, to, to learn in and with the school. But just being a part of a community like this is mm. one of the most awesome things about joining mm. Green School Bali. Yeah, that's so mm. true, Sal. Thanks for taking a minute on that one. So we have been very intentional at Green School around setting up Green School for grown-ups because you're right, when we come here, we, we all, or many of us, really want to be part of it yeah. in, in some way to give and receive from the Green School experience. So Green School for grown-ups um, is really our parent engagement program with talks and workshops, a co-working space, areas to socialise, network and contribute to the school. So it's a beautiful program and it's open. All our parents are automatically members of the bridge and that's where all of that engagement is facilitated. So get ready fantastic. to get busy. All right, next one, Harper, <laughs> dress code. Do we have one? Um, we have a sort of dress code. Um, it's very <laughs> lax. <laughs> so we have dress guidelines. Dress mm -hmm. guidelines, mm. right. It's not very strict. Um, and it's nothing like, oh, you need it to be below your knees or anything like that. It's more like just don't be naked. <laughs> and don't there's a little more to it than that to be fair don't be naked <laughs> and out of the mouth right, clarity we said there's going to be clarity okay <laughs> so like basically if you have a really short top mm -hmm. and really low jeans or something mm -hmm. like if your full mm -hmm. torso is out that's not great mm -hmm. um and then like yeah we ask that genitals. people dress <laughs> respectfully yes um in our, in our particular situation. We're a school here. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in Indonesia. We ask for people to dress mm -hmm. respectfully. I know that there'd be, you know, there's obvious a different dress code for the students going surfing right now and mm -hmm. off or into the community. Um, but, you know, it's, it isn't, I don't think it's as lax as half is saying. There's just a different way of looking at how we want our uh, community and in particular our students to be able to express themselves. And we don't want to have a uniform here. But with that, we're um, opening up the options for students to dress how they like, but we'd provide the opportunity again to make a responsible decision about that mm. and be respectful with their choice of clothing when they're at school. Yeah, good yeah. answer. <laughs> Similar to... I think the code says you need a top with a front, yes. back and sides. Yeah. And it's not whether you're male, female, your body size, uh, what gender you identify as, like none of that matters. This is just what we ask everybody to go with and then with that you can be creative as you want so if those pants you're wearing are pajama pants that's fine if that Bring skirt you're wearing is a tutu that's okay too well maybe not the tutu but you get the point yeah. so we want that individually there's probably about five tutus in the early years right now a lot of tutus in early years <laughs> oh, but in early years you can like come to school as elsa every day it's great. <laughs> you come to school as elsa yeah <laughs> but i think one thing and maybe the parents would appreciate is that it is um it, it's hard, which is great, uh, for the community, the students here to fall into the kind of fashion parade sort of uh, mm. experience that sometimes can happen in a school, particularly where you don't have a uniform. And that's mainly because uh, there's not a lot of choice about what you can buy here in Bali, but also everything gets trashed. Not everything trashed, gets but trashed in the jungle. It's hot. Mm. We get in the, the mud. Uh, it rains. Um, right, Harper? It's not gentle on the clothes here. Yeah, I mean, I guess it depends who you are. If you're getting in the mud, then yeah, you're going to get your clothes ruined. But I mean, that's just a part of part living of life. I don't know. Right. Love talking about dress code. Love talking about dress code. Mm -hmm. um, 
quick one, and maybe I'll take this one. Uh, what type of social activities are there? Not sure if that's for the students or, or for the parents, but of course the students, you know, will connect with each other, organise their own kind of things. The school sometimes will put events on as well for the students. And for the parents, there's quite a bit that is organised by the school for our parents to connect up with each other, meet each other, um, and to really <laughs> feel part of the Big Green School family. We know it's a big deal when families are moving from abroad. You need to find your tribe, you need to find your family, and you want to feel loved and supported um, and connected. And so we do put a lot of effort into that. How does Green School recruit teachers? Oh, that's difficult to do as a quick one as yeah, well, but have a, a go. Well, look, all our teachers need to have at least five years uh, teaching experience before they can even get a kitas a working visa here, Indonesian regulation. Um, we have a lot of fun recruiting some of the best educators around the world. Um, we definitely look at professional attributes, experiencing things, but we're also looking for teachers that can collaborate and adapt, uh, be creative. Uh, they want to be a part of something that's different. Often that takes hard work, so we want commitment and motivation. We advertise uh, logistically, we advertise on the website. We run green educator courses now. There's 50 or 60 in a current eight week course. Uh, a lot of our hires come through that green educator course. It's a blended uh, synchronous and uh, asynchronous learning experience about uh, green being a green educator from skills to projects to sustainability. Um, we hire through that really well. Um, we have uh, different cycles of different sort of hiring needs like any school. Um, but yeah, there's that formal qualifications, which is pretty standard, standard in Indonesia uh, particularly. But also, you know, it's, um, we hire awesome people. And I suppose, I mean, that's uh, a testament to that is a lot of the feedback we get from alumni and, and from our students and community here that, you know, probably one of the best things and most long lasting memories that people take from here is the connection with the teachers. Um, and that's I think true. that's across our, our the board. students and also our past graduates who we've, um, mm. we've just sent a survey to to check in on where they are and what they're doing in the world and their reflection. I think it's number on one, isn't it? School. Teachers, always number one. Number one. Yeah. Most impactful. Mm. Most impact. Uh, yeah. Part of their green school experience, mm. the thing that has really impacted their lives, their yeah. values, their learning, their passion for lifelong learning, yeah. all of those things. So it's beautiful. Pretty so, awesome yes. teaching team when you're allowed to design a new model and then a new mm. team within that. You know, we've got some pretty uh, amazing teachers and different. Mm. You know, we build, yeah. we build teams that have different personalities and different passions, and that's important. You know, we teach out of the box, and our teachers, we want to be thinking and probably, you know, a lot of the time out of the box as well. Yeah, and they're mm. just really lovely, kind humans, aren't they, Harper? Mm. I'm sure you can Yeah, I think the best that. part about being at Green School is the people, but especially the teachers. I don't know. Except I for feel that like middle I school maths up... teacher you had. <laughs> Foxell <laughs> was my math teacher in middle school. When he had his dreads. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Half was telling me that I looked okay this morning, but I looked better with my dreadlocks. Yeah. Yeah. Back in the day. Back in the day. Okay, folks, I'm going to keep rolling it along. And, Janie, we haven't answered all your questions, but we might come back to those at the end, if we can, because I just want to make sure we've, we've um, answered questions for as many people as we, as we can. Um, so one from Melanie. How many students in a class? Take it away, Sal. Always less than 20. Um, basically, but a lot of our elective programs allows the middle school and high school classes to be uh, smaller, less than 10 a lot of the time. Um, but, you know, uh, a student-teacher ratio is probably better than any school right now in the world, uh, particularly in uh, early years and primary. There's at least three adults in a room for primary and early years for every 15 to 20, maximum 20 students. Um, you know, sometimes you'll get a class like your homeroom in high school, middle school, we have 20, low 20s, um, but then with the elective program, they go off into different groups and different classes. But I wouldn't say there's a class of active learning uh, with more than 20 students in it happening at the school right now. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think 20 is the max. 20 is about the max. It's max. Nice. You know, four, we have classes of four or five kids and they're okay, but you probably need a few more people in your little learning community for that class. I'd lo I love teaching classes with about 12, 15 students. Nice, big enough mix. Um, that was fun. Mm. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Sal. Um, question again, just about the diploma program and college pathways mm. around where the college scouts come to the school and also just on the, the high school diploma and, and how is it different from a conventional 
uh, diploma and how does that sort of play out for the students? And if I can just offer mm. a little bit yeah. on that one um, before we start. You've had two start. graduates you've done with the, done the yeah, I have, two I have two graduates of my own, mm. um, but also have, you know, been very connected yeah. to our alumni as part of my role in community to stay in touch with them. And, you know, it is not the case that every university, when they see a Green School Diploma, will instantly understand and recognise it. But we do know a few things. Number one, where our students, where Green School students have gone to university or college, they inevitably want more Green School students. We know universities are looking for something different these days. As an admissions manager said to me from a university in Canada, Kate, I have a pile this high of straight A students that can play the violin. We actually need kids that stand out from the pack, that turn up, that are engaged, that have the kind of mindset, attitude and passion for learning um, that we're looking for. We want children with skills not just knowledge. And so we know things are changing. We know a lot of our students will apply to more progressive universities and schools, um, and that plays out well. Um, I don't remember any student out of Green School that has applied to university that has not gotten into university. Might not have been their first choice. Uh, usually it is, but might not. But maybe that's more about what they're presenting and the competition rather than the diploma not being recognised. So we have a Pathways counsellor in the high school and part of her role is to go knocking on those university doors and make sure that they are having a look at our students. Mm. And we're able to do that individually um, because there's only 20 students in grade right. 12 right now and 19 in grade 11. And so we're able to provide that student-centred pathway advice and support. You know, the, the diploma, you still get a GPA. Um, mm -hmm. You're still able to do SAT prep classes and we can help do that sort of stuff as well. So. You know, it's definitely about the individual student and family and choice, but it, it, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's, a, you know, a set in a concrete plan that we've got for everyone because you can't have that. Um, every family coming from different countries, wanting to go to different universities in different countries, you know, um, it's very personalised and it, it's a real strength of us this year for, for high school to have that high school um, pathways coordinator. Uh, we run transition days uh, in between the blocks, the terms for high school, which provide opportunities. They're mostly pathways days, so universities come into that and other organisations. Um, not a lot of difference, I don't think, from a standard uh, US high school diploma. Very different to an Australian, you know, ATAR score. I think they're still doing them or, you know, an IGCSE or an IB sort of um, diploma. But um, like Kate said, you know, we are actually learning as we go and building strength in that in terms of mm. providing that individual support for where Looking a student at, wants to as go. As students go through the high school program like Harper in making those choices each time the co new course set starts, you know, they are choosing courses that will give them credit in the core subjects mm. that need to be covered to, in order to get the Green School Diploma. So students are building intentionally their pathway and if they want to pursue um, a degree in the in, in the science field, for example, then they need to make sure they are taking enough of science so that they're going to be looked on favourably in their application. Yeah. But you need to complete a set of credits successfully to get the Green School Diploma and the school can show that, can demonstrate all of that to universities. The program is robust and it's rigorous and it's academically, mm. you know, challenging. Um, and we, and don't all hide, of those we don't hide any of this through the admissions process either. No, and I was going to so say that. So we want to know, talk to applicant families yeah. about that and what your hopes and aspirations are for your child, what the child's hopes and aspirations are as well, and get to know you because mm. it really is a two-way yeah. kind of selection process. Yeah. Um, actually, we have seven credits that can be, um, so we have required credits for each um, class, right, or like subject, and then we have seven credits that can be anything, and that's sort of like um, you get to choose what you are passionate about, and you put more, F more credits into that, so then each person's diploma and credits are a bit different. Bit different. Yes, no two the same, no but there's a central core that runs right through. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But we have a high school profile. We can provide that to applicant families. You can mm. see where our graduates have gone and which schools they've gone into around the world and so on, but also what else some of our students have done because we have one student, Sal, that graduated from here and was offered a scholarship at Harvard and declined it because mm. she's busy. Um, <laughs> She's busy saving the planet. Mm. And there was another one that was uh, into UK somewhere who said no, and then six months later she was there lecturing on uh, ecophobia and ecophilia. 
started so her own foundation. Started her own yeah. foundation, and yeah. now she's sort of just guest lecturing. Okay, mm. well, we could talk about but there's that. There's so much day. information, importantly, like, yes. you know, we could just keep talking about it, but there's a lot of information on the website. The admissions teams are yes. so awesome and amazing. Uh, this isn't the end of a conversation about a possibility that Green School Bali could be for you, but it's just really the start of a two-way conversation where we're able to share authentically all of um, the valid real-life information about any of the programs here, um, but keep you connected in terms of deciding whether the Green School Bali is the right fit for you and your family. Great. Thank you, Sal. Excellent summary. Um, Olga, a question from Olga just about her son um, applying to the eighth grade and what level of English he needs to have. So we will do an assessment mm -hmm. as part of the application process and we offer some ELL support, but also we, we also run a parallel program called Green School English that can support children ahead of joining um, the normal or the regular program. So very happy to share more with but you I'll tell on you, that, just Olga. On average, you know, just a intermediate, bit better than beginner English mm. is, is fine to come in. There's a bit of immersion. I've seen it so many times through through my time here at Green School. Someone coming in, some immersion, some support, um, and other, other little ways that we can learn English together. And and then I see at the end of the year, we're all sort of crying in the, in the school hall, watching them do uh, Quest or Green Zone presentations in English better than myself. So, yeah. There is support, but we go through that in the admissions process. Great one, thank you. Um, so I'm jumping around a little bit here, but I just want to pick up um, a couple of additional questions from Lewis. Um, thank you, Lewis. Lewis is on track to be doing calculus in 10th grade. I think this applies to everyone, but if I'm a student that is ahead of the normal pace, will I be pushed back or will the Green School adapt? No, we'll adapt. Quick, that's quick fire. How did one? Quick fire. We'll, we'll adapt. adapt. It's one of our strengths, yeah. adaptability. Yeah. Green school skills, one of them is adapt. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Lewis. Um, and just a question about masks as well. And so in Bali, and this is a requirement by the Indonesian mm -hmm. government, so when we are in classrooms, uh, we are wearing masks. But for physical well-being, sort of ex um, things outside the classroom, on the field and in the gym and so on, we're not wearing masks. Yeah. Here right now in Indonesia, it's a requirement to wear a mask outside of the house. Mm -hmm. um, but as you can see, we're, we're not crazy about it um, and we're very human about it. So, yeah. We have the benefit of this incredibly large campus. Open There's no air. walls. All our buildings are wallless and open. Um, so mm. it's really positioned us really well. But it's not eight hours. I want to just say it's not eight hours of wearing a mask. No. 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 And just a question about vaccinations and uh, most of our staff and faculty are fully vaccinated. Just yeah. to answer that question, that is a quick one. Can answer. Oh, you win the quick fire. <laughs> Here's another quick one um, yes. from Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. Is there music, uh, brackets, piano or piano school on island? Yeah, some, well, uh, sometimes there's music, piano, piano bass, keyboards. We've got keyboards. The, the wooden pianos or similar don't really last that long. Um, band school high, well, high school band that looks differently all the time there's some keyboards in there there's lots of music teachers external to the community as well if you're an amazing piano player um, there'll be chances for you to continue to, to be an amazing piano player here yeah. um, but we do not have a grand piano no, we, have we don't keyboards, have a grand piano yeah. but we have lots of instruments mm -hmm. music is big at green school like yeah. i mean in primary Every year we would have um, our grade as a band and we would perform songs. Yeah. And Still. in high school, um, music is always offered. Um, we have marimba, which is this like mixture between drums and uh, piano with wood. Mm. And it's like this huge orchestra thing. It's really cool. It you is love very marimba. cool. <laughs> love yeah. marimba. Yes. Oh, if you're also on the piano, you'll love marimba because it's very sort of similar. But... Yeah, music's a big part. And I was talking about it the other day at the Green Educator course. I reckon that every school in the world, those music classrooms, those doors need to be open because it's such an amazing part of Green School. You come in, you can hear the marimba or the primary assembly this morning. There would have been a student, uh, a class band on there. Music's a big part of life. And this school is connected mm. to the real world and music does help us do that. That exploration of the creative self, mm. it is a big piece yeah. of the Green yeah. School learning experience. And Connecting and together. It, but it's also community building. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the times that we dance together yes. with bands, live bands yeah. and 
uh, the times that we share and our learning and celebrate our learning, music's a big part of this, yeah. Okay, do we have a swimming pool on site uh, or is there one locally? Thank you, Nikki. No That's and yes. No so and there is yes. sort of, there's a jungle swimming pool by the a river. Mm -hmm. um, At the moment, it's not really a, in use no, it's since a, Corona. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But my mom used to use it all the time. <laughs> and there's, there are local normal sort of lap yeah. swimming pools around. And we do offer swimming programs pool. and... Yeah. And things like that at different times. Yeah. There is a swimming um, into school um, yeah. at the end of the year, normally competition at yes. the end. Yeah. Running out of words. Favorite. What time is it? Running out of words. Running out of words. Um, does uh, So, questions just about visas, so maybe I mm. can just take that one. So, as I mentioned earlier, we've had 50 families uh, or so join us this current school year, so starting back in August. And um, the school has been able to support families in accessing visas to enter Indonesia um, and also to provide advice and even assistance with um, deciding on travel options and uh, booking quarantine and so on. So at the moment, in fact, last night, I just read that the, the quarantine for fully vaccinated people ha is going down to three nights. Don't quote me. We're yet to confirm, but mm -hmm. um, it sounds pretty solid. So uh, just a three night or two night, it's not clear, three or two night quarantine. Um, and then the school requires an, an additional three days or so self isolation before coming to campus. So things have gotten easier and easier, but even at the most difficult time, um, we were still able to support families to come in that were really motivated to come and be part of the school. And we're happy to do that. So we think um, and expect things will only get clearer and easier, but we really ramped up our support services to families during that time because we know it's a big decision uh, to come across the planet at this time um, in the world. So we want to give a lot of love and support to the families that have come and are coming in January and then let's see how things look in August, perhaps a little mm. easier and more straightforward at that time. Okay, um, question here about grants or scholarships. Um, Harpa, maybe maybe you can uh, not necessarily answer that, that question directly, but maybe just share a little bit about your experiences being a student here alongside our Balinese scholars, because we do give scholarships, but they're exclusively for Balinese children. Yeah. Um, just explain like what it's like to well, you have, have a classes few, with uh, them? Uh, students in your class. It's actually yeah. a big part of the experience at Green School that doesn't get spoken about so much, but it's very, I think, special. Yeah, I think um, a lot of my friends that have been here for as long as I have, have been the Balinese local scholar students. And I don't know, I they're like one of my best friends because I've known them for so long. Mm -hmm. And also they are, since they have that scholarship, they seem much they're really motivated to take advantage of all the opportunities at Green School. Mm. So, yeah, there's some really great people. And, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's a great program. I'm really happy that it exists because those are amazing people that deserve to be at school, Yeah. Um, at this school. And so, actually, the school, Green School gives a lot of scholarships. Um, I think we have, as Sal said, around 35 or so students on full scholarship at Green School. But those scholarship opportunities are only open to Balinese children. And this is part of our commitment mm. and our give back um, to all of us here having the opportunity to be here in, in Indonesia, in Bali as the guests, but making sure that we're not here in some kind of expat bubble. Yep. Um, but as Sal mentioned before, really truly meaningfully doing our best to try and be connected locally and grounded and to give back in a really meaningful way. So thank you for the question. Oh, I need to, okay, Leanne's giving me a shout out that we have a question from a student. I just wanted to, before we jump to that one and that might just about wrap us up, I think, I just wanted to quickly <coughs> let you know, questions about admissions and the process, grade placement, timing, that sort of thing please reach out to our admissions team on that because we can help you one-on-one um, -on -one with that. So generally speaking, we have uh, finalised most of our placements for January. We have two intakes a year in August and in January, the beginning of each semester. So we're finalising uh, January enrolments now. Most of them are nicely tucked in and our focus then is supporting those families to prepare feel connected to the community way before they even start here and then once they get here settling in and so on 
Then we're turning our mind to August 2022 and our incoming families there and beyond. So if you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask. And um, Leanne, Pasha, <coughs> Tian and the team are there to, to help you. All right, let's check out this question that Leanne has highlighted. Olivia? Oh, okay, Hi, great question. Hi, Olivia. Um, how are the new students integrated by the other students? Hmm. Great it's question. One, good, one thing we did pretty pretty well here because there's a lot of movement and the, it's not that sort of, sort of school where there's one new kid that joins. No. You know, mm -hmm. there's a whole heap. There's a, the community changes like that. We have different um, family, uh, but also student opportunities to transition. We've just run a, a springboard camp, so mm -hmm. sort of like a day day camp sort of idea in terms of getting to use to the campus and the experience. Mm -hmm. Um, but in terms of individual students going into middle school, high school, it's pretty amazing community to go into with mentors and buddies. Um, we don't just throw you in there and, and leave you alone. We look after you. Uh, you and, and I suppose that's not me, the we, but we as a community, um, from admissions to the teachers to, to myself, you know, it's really important um, to welcome and to support new people at, into Green School Bali. I think it's true to say that it is, it would be a rare situation where a child does not settle in um, it takes really some time. quite smoothly, but yeah. it can it can take, it can take some time. time. Um, and so we want to put some scaffolding around that and some love and so I mentioned the springboard camp, but also what we do before families even arrive here mm. in Bali to stay connected to our families, not only the parents, but the students, the children as well. And then the springboard camp orientation and all that goes on in a classroom and a learning neighborhood to support the, the student, the child to settle in. Um, Harper, I know you were involved in the springboard camp, but also you've been here for so long. I'm sure you've seen so many new students arrive over the years. Yeah, I mean, usually people come here for like one or two years. Mm -hmm. So we're really used to people coming and going. And I think we're really excited when people come. Like it's just a fun new thing that happens. Mm -hmm. um, and so it would be really weird if... Mm -hmm. I mean, we usually like come up and hug you. It's a little bit crazy. <laughs> We're like oh, new people. <laughs> um, uh, so I think integrating is very easy yeah. um, compared to other schools. And sorry, what was the question? <laughs> Good answer. It's great. I mean, mm. the question was really about how a new student, and it is from um, from a student, from a child. I don't want to say child. I don't know how old you are, Olivia, mm. um, but from a young person uh, who's just asking, you know, how are the how are new students supported to be part of the community, integrate into the school? Oh, yeah. and as far as springboard, um, yeah, I got to facilitate that, um, like mini facilitator. They mm -hmm. called me because I was like in training. And that was really um, cool to meet all the new students beforehand and, I don't know, have sort of like a fun camp thing going on yeah. and teach them a little bit about Bali and different things Make like that. Make some friendly faces, yeah. mm -hmm. find their way around, you know, all those pieces. I think we always want to come back to that. It's kind of a Maslow's hierarchy type mm. approach, right, Sal, where we, we want the children to feel safe. Yep. secure know what's what kind of on the campus and that is number one priority because only after those pieces are really beautifully taken care of can of course the learning happen and you know we really get into full flight in the green school way mm. so we put a lot of love and and care into that um and thank you harper for being part of that you're always such yeah. a contributor well it starts now it in starts a way. now thanks middle school mm. olivia's middle school. my my oh, son's great. in middle school right now that's right. Love middle school. Love the middle school. Mm. Yeah, we do. Um, okay. Uh, okay, just a question about vaccinations, mandatory for staff and teachers. Um, vaccinations are required um, for our staff and teachers, just to answer that question. And then we might jump back quickly. I don't think Leanne will give me a ping if I've missed something here, but... Uh, we just have a couple of minutes left and we might just jump back to Janie's um, questions because there were a couple at the end that weren't answered. These um, are the quick fire well, ones. Will, <laughs> will students uh, learn other languages? But I think we, you have Yeah, I spoke about that. that. They'll learn Indonesian and they can, if they're getting older, start but learning also, some other yeah, languages. Language language lab, you basically individually yeah. can mm -hmm. learn a That's language. just in high yeah. school. Yeah, just in high school. Yeah. Otherwise, it's instructional can, language yep. is English, Bahasa Indonesia... 
Well, some students that choose to continue learning a home-based language, but they do that sort of outside of school time. Right. Yeah. Okay, and here's a great one. Um, how are students assessed and what is the grading system look like? And maybe we can just start a little bit at high school, what does that look mm. like? And then just a little insight into to middle, primary and early years yeah, as well. Grading in, in high school is optional too. A student can choose to have grades or do a pass complete. Uh, grading through you know, the standard ABCs for, for most, most classes. Uh, assessment looks quite different. I think there are some formal summative assessments. Um, you know, they'll be doing end of unit tests and things like that. But it's definitely not that number that's the whole, well, you know, here's your result for the, to, for your, um, the class. We assess on skill-based learning. We assess on values, demonstration. Uh, we ask students to reflect and assess on themselves. There'll be ongoing assessment through different classes in different ways. Looks a little bit different to a lot of schools where we want uh, our assessment to be holistic because the learning program's holistic. Um, some of it's standard, some of it's um, pretty green school when you're assessing for I respect values. Um, middle school down through uh, primary, not so much of a focus on standardised assessments. Yep. Hmm. So we don't give grades. Don't give below grades. High school, below so high school. Middle school, primary and early years. Yeah. But, it's not a grade based but the best re process. student report and assessments I've ever seen have happened here where a student's able to describe their learning, describe mm -hmm. the challenges that they faced, describe the skills that they used to overcome, describe things that they knew before that they were able to use in that class, describe things that they learnt now that they know that they will use in the future. When you read some of the student assessments, the student reflections, they're better than any teacher comment I've read in a report and they're better and more accurate a description of assessment of learning, because that's what we're talking about, than a, an A or B or an 85%. I absolutely love reading the student reflections. Mm. It's a favourite part of my yeah. children's reports mm. as they went it's through the school. But I think it's, it's sometimes confusing for parents because... Um, the fact that we don't necessarily do standardised kind of testing or exams throughout the right through the school does not mean we don't assess students. Mm. So we do assess, and the way we assess it is a little more di a little different, as Sal said, mm. more holistic, and is delivered in a way that's not about giving grades until the students hit grade nine, right, mm -hmm. Harper, and then and then yeah. that happens, right? So in high school, we need grades to get into universities and things mm -hmm. like that. So that's why we have grades only in high school. But um, before high school and during high school, we have it additionally. We have the meeting expectations, exceeding expectations, and developing, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and, that, and then also, of course, teacher comment. They write a little reflection of their mm -hmm. own of how they think we did in the class. And then we say what we liked about the class, what we did in the class, what we thought, how we did. Um, so there's lots of elements in the report card, yeah. Yeah, that's mm. great. Thanks so much, Harper. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that just about brings us yeah. to the end of the session. Before we do our goodbyes and thank yous, I just wanted to let you know that we will be providing a survey to you, um, and that might sound tedious, uh, but it's super quick. It will take you probably 30 seconds. Um, and if you could take that for us and give us some feedback because we like to reflect too and these events are for you and we want them to be meaningful. Um, give me a grade, go on. Give him a, a dare score. You. <laughs> Exceeding expectations, yeah. not yet meeting I think I was a B plus today maybe. A B plus, he's giving himself yeah. a B plus. Well, Harper, I'm giving you an A You're plus. an A today. <laughs> I'm giving yeah. myself a B. But A, that <laughs> doesn't, that's not A, B, C, it's A for awesome. Thanks, Harper. You were awesome today. Well, there's yeah. always room for improvement. So please do send us mm. your feedback. We are never afraid to hear that and listen to that and respond to that. So I just want to say thanks. Um, firstly, to you, Sal, thanks for giving us some time. I know you are a My busy, pleasure. busy human of Green School. Don't know if you uh, notice. I like talking time. about this place. Yeah. It's a passion of mine. Always a pleasure. Make sure this is just uh, the start of a conversation, yeah? Come and shake the education tree at Green School Bali. Fantastic. Thank you, Sal. And Harper, it has been a delight to have you here on the Bamboo Seti. Thank mm. you for having me. Did you Very enjoy fancy. it? Very <laughs> fancy. Uh, yeah, it was great. Yeah. I think mm. one of the things about our Green School students is that we love to build that nice, you know, humility, but a really nice, strong inner confidence and other skills in communication and understanding themselves and being able to sort of tone up and be part of a conversation like this, which is not always easy, right. even for us uh, grown-ups. So 
Well done, Harper. Um, excellent. Let's Thank give you. a yeah, round of applause. Yeah, you guys have you, been Harper. giving me presentation <laughs> skills since I was three. Yeah, yes, right. we have. Yeah. Our, our kids can talk mm. at Green School. They yeah. can pres present very persuasively. <laughs> Okay, brilliant. Thanks so much. And thank you to Leanne, Tian, Pancha on the end of the admissions email and the crew here that supported putting this together. And most of all, thank you, thank uh, you. for giving us some of your time today. Mm. It's been an absolute pleasure to get your questions and uh, to see all those beautiful faces out there all around the world. So stay in touch with us. Let us know how we can help. Um, all the contacts are there and I hope we see you again soon. Thank you very Bye -bye. much, everyone. Bye. Bye.